Hi, it's day three of Glastonbury now and we're backstage with Stella Donnelly. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Bit sweaty under here, but <laughs> feeling good. Um, this is your first Glastonbury. Uh, how is it comparing to your expectations? I, I, you, there's no kind of preparing for a festival like this, you know. You walk around the grounds and, and it's just this crazy overstimulation of people and it's amazing I just think it's it's amazing that a festival like this can run uh, you know the way that it does um, you know without too many hitches so yeah. yeah it's amazing it's great to be here is there anything in Australia that compares to it we've got a festival called Splendor in the Grass in Australia which is probably our biggest kind of uh, uh, pop music I guess festival in a way um, and it, it gets a lot of people down there but we've also got a big one called Woodford Folk Festival which gets like thousands like 100,000 people down there every every year and that's amazing as well so but nothing quite like this yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't get you know amazing scrumpy cider <laughs> at those festivals yeah um, what's the weirdest thing that you've seen so far at Glastonbury um, we we've seen a f <laughs> we've seen a couple of things. Um, my partner and I actually sat during Tame and Parlor and counted how many people we saw wearing uh, sequins, and we've managed to count like 120 people. Wow. I don't know why we did it. I think we were just <laughs> I don't know why we weren't bored or anything. Tame did a great set. It was beautiful, but you know we we're just yeah, just, you know passing the time, and uh, yeah, so that was pretty funny. But uh, a few like a big line of people with moose heads kind of just managed to like walk their way through the crowd at one point um, and I've seen a really good flag that's got Kylie Minogue on it and it says I can't get I just can't get you out of my head but the U is the EU and it's got the big the EU stars around it and I, yeah I just want to give that flag a shout out I thought that was <laughs> fab it was great um, so what else have you been up to apart from watching Tame have you um, gone into any of the kind of healing fields, green fields areas? Not yet. That's what I'm going to do this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready yeah. to be healed. I needed to like get, <laughs> get down and dirty first and then now, you know, cleanse my spirit. Um, yeah, so I, I caught Pond as well, West Australia Boys, um, and Dream Wife played on the left field stage. Uh, yesterday afternoon it was amazing. Obviously watched Billy Bragg on the left field stage. And um, yeah, it's been a really cool, cool first day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Billy Bragg is someone that's really inspired you lyrically. Mm. How was it meeting him? I was shitting bricks. <laughs> it was so, it was fucking crazy. But he's just the most approachable person. He's so kind. He's got time for everyone. He's got time for, you know, literally anyone that's in that area he's chatting to and everything like that. And I immediately had this kind of sense of calm and, and stuff. So it's a, just a dream come true, really. I can just go go home now and, and sleep forever and I, I feel like I've just done you know done everything I wanted to do so I'm really stoked <laughs> um, when you were playing the radical roundup with him yesterday Ooh. you played a new song called political song yeah Shifts. yeah um tell us about that song yeah so that song is something I wrote that um last year when I was actually writing the album and okay. it just didn't end up making it onto the album because I, I felt like it was really hard to capture the vibe of it on record. I just think it's something that it almost needs a crowd there to see my, the expressions on my face when I perform right. that song because it's, you know, I'm kind of, you know, the lyrics are just like pretty like aggressive. <laughs> like I'm calling someone a racist bigot. Yeah. But I've got, I'm smiling and I've got this like glint in my eye and I, I feel like that has to be captured um, in it, I've, you know, there's there's so many nuances in, in trying to get a story across and stuff like that. So it hasn't made it onto the record and, and I'm still trying to work out how I'll put that out into the world if I put it out into the world. Yeah. Maybe it's just something I do live when it calls for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And maybe I'll change the names out if I need to, but yeah, I hope I don't get fucking sued, but we'll see, yeah. <laughs> Um, you said when you were introducing that song on stage that you kind of wrote it as a reaction to being called a political musician. Yeah. Is that something that annoys you? Not, it annoys me when it's like, when it's put with songstress, I yeah. think. is That kind of annoys me a little bit. And it, it kind of, I feel like it's used as an excuse to not, listen to me or mm -hmm. it's like it's used as an excuse to kind of like put me in that kind of uh, pigeonhole and leave me there and, and pay attention to other artists and stuff like that and you know I don't just write about politics and, and stuff like yeah. that you know I write about bad Tinder dates and, and <laughs> shit. I mean everything's fucking politics in the end but yeah I don't know I feel like I, I just feel like it gets used against me which mm -hmm. I don't quite understand why because yeah. you see so many blokes writing songs that have you know sort of political things to it but they're just known as musicians yeah, whereas exactly. I get the singer songwriter songstress vibe and it's <laughs> fucking 
come on. And yeah. people are always saying that musicians need to be more political as well. So Yeah, they need to be or they're not, yeah, and like, then, oh, you're too political yeah. and it's just, yeah, I mean, for me, I wrote Boys Will Be Boys and those songs because those, that shit was actually happening to me in my life at the yeah. time. So I wrote about it yeah. and, and then, and then it became a big political issue, which it fucking needed to anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of funny. I was just writing about my life, which ended up becoming quite politicised. Not my life, but you know, those issues yeah. became politicised in a way so it's quite interesting to, to watch it all happen and, and getting trolled is really fun and you know it's great it's great times <laughs> you said also on stage yesterday that you wrote a song to political songstress to piss people off yeah do you like winding people up not it's so funny that it went while I'm doing it I'm enjoying it and then you know and then at home you know when I'm like eating ice cream in bed crying reading the <laughs> fucking Twitter comments like wondering why the hell I did it like it's so I don't know why I do it to myself yeah. but it just kind of you get that little it's like kind of skydiving and then like maybe breaking your arm as you land or something yeah. it's still a really good time you, you get kind of pummeled <laughs> for it I don't know it's a stupid metaphor but yeah I don't know I half enjoy pissing people off and then half kind of wish I had never started music <laughs> ever <laughs> yeah, yeah if I'm honest with you like yeah. full disclosure yeah um, so you put out your debut album earlier this year uh, is it too soon to expect new music from you coming up in yeah. the next few months? Yeah, I've <laughs> been too busy. <laughs> yes, uh, leave me alive. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, um, I yeah, the touring has just been crazy from this from this period and from the album and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's. There's, I've got nothing kind of ready. Um, hopefully, I'm going to have, have a bit of time off between shows and stuff yeah. coming up. So hopefully I can kind of start writing again. Because I'm feeling it there, but I just, yeah, haven't really had that time. And yeah. you use a different part of your brain when you're on tour in a way. You're mm -hmm. quite mathematical, I think, and you have to kind of be onto it. Whereas yeah. when you're creative, you're kind of messy and you can be late to things. And you, <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. can't really do that when you're touring. That's my experience anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. your schedule. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Stella. Have a great last Thank you so much. See you soon. <laughs>